Hey guys, welcome back to Taste of Reality, and today is going to be a little bit different. So, I completely forgot that they were doing two episodes a day because they're trying to cram, you know, the end of the season before um, the holidays and before the new season. So, um, the first part is going to be episode 10, the mental all and everything. I'm going to get into that. Um, I filmed that last night, so I'm going to look a little different. And then um, you can skip to this timestamp right here for the hometown dates so hopefully it's not too confusing and uh let's get into it so what we missed last week was riley's name isn't really riley brendan has cold feet zach was a middle school cheater and bennett is apparently in love yeah that was the last one is a little sketchy so I don't really, I don't really believe it. But that's what we missed last week. I know I couldn't do a video, guys. I was just in a funk. But I am back, okay? Let's get on to the shenanigans of this week. So Blake ends up getting the first date of the week. It is a one-on-one. -on -one, and it's like, it's like a sexual shaman experience kind of thing. The date is centered around spiritual alignment, I guess you could say. And um, yeah, it was interesting. Tisha, your heart chakra is a little cautious. They get to a point where they're doing this like tantric yoga situation. And as Tasia's looking Blake in the eyes, she realizes it's not there. I don't see it. Unfortunately for Blake, he ends up getting axed just like this rock and she sends him packing. I did not expect her to get this emotional about this goodbye because I never thought that their connection was this deep. I never saw it. I like I would have wished it was there because I love Blake. But yeah the, the the emotions were kind of unwarranted to me but hey that's how she felt that's how she expressed it it is what it is y'all if blake is not the next bachelor i mean he's fine he's smart he's emotionally in tune he's canadian mm. that might be the reason because he's canadian okay well bachelor canada let's get blake come on <laughs> come on do the right thing. So Blake's departure actually causes Tasia to have an epiphany about another guy in the house and that guy is Riley. She she basically said she felt like the guard was up for so long that at the moment that he really started breaking it down, it was just too late. And I don't want to lead you on. I'm sorry. How? I, I don't get it. I don't. What am I missing? What am I missing? Personally, I do agree with her because I feel like I saw more of himself when he was with um, the girl from the beginning. What was her name? What was her name? What was her name? What was her name? You guys, Claire. <laughs> her name was Claire. I don't know. And personally, I feel like she should have let him go weeks ago because. I just, I, I just didn't feel the connect. So I'm like, why is she keeping him around? Whatever, she chose to do what she did, so it is what it is. At the rose ceremony, the two guys without roses are Bennett and Noah. And again, why couldn't you have done this weeks ago? I don't understand. I don't get it. Like, I, I never really saw the connection with Bennett, like, okay, y'all, oh, I love you. What? No, like, if that was a producer plant, he played it well because, oh my gosh, such a, such a, oh, he's like a gnat just in your ear, just wouldn't leave you alone. And then Noah, like, he was crying in the van, and I'm thinking to myself, like, sir, the majority of the time that you were here, you were causing drama and you had more interactions with the men inciting trouble than you did making a genuine connection with Tasia. That's just me. However, they both were sent home and we move on to the men tell all portion of the episode. Chris starts by asking Ed, of all people, why he had such an issue with Chasen. He's a three F's, he's a fraud, 
fake and phony. My thing with Ed is like, Ed was a caricature the entire time. I never felt like he was there for a connection. He was another producer plant in my opinion. I also feel like, why is he so immature for his age? Like something's not connecting here. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but he was pretty like upset about um, Chasen and his antics and whatnot. And my boyfriend, Damar, my baby Zanny, <laughs> he don't know it yet, but he gonna be. He came to Chasen's defense and this is why I love him. When it came down to it, I felt like you talked more about Chasen than you did about Claire, than you did about Tasha. He's such a great guy. Moving on to Bennett and Noah. Nothing here has changed. I just, I'm exhausted. Bennett's last words are actually an apology. I'm sorry that my words came across as, you know, condescending. Surprisingly enough. And Noah's last words, well. I personally think you're an ostentatious Harvard D-bag. Yeah. Safe to say they not gonna be friends in the future. So one of the ghosts of Bachelor's past, Yosef, has returned. Personally, I feel like, why are we even wasting our time with this guy? However, he felt like he needed to say his piece, which was basically the same thing he's been saying the whole time. He absolutely does not regret anything he said. I mean, everything I said was factually accurate. I don't think I said anything inflammatory, you know, to warrant that response. And as much as I agreed with the reasoning behind his comments the delivery was just too disrespectful and too out of line for me to be okay with what he did comments were still very out of line clearly his lack of remorse just shows the kind of person that he is hopefully his daughter is proud because me i would not be but let me not bring people's kids into it let's just move on on to bennett who actually questions Tasia on whether or not her feelings for him were even genuine, especially because she sent him home after he said, I love you. <laughs> she already sent you home the first time. Okay. You had to come back and be sent home a second. And then now in the mental, oh, you want to question whether or not she really, come on, come on. Uh, why? Why? We just weren't exactly there yet. And there were relationships that had formed and were a little bit stronger at the time. I gotta move on before I'm triggered. I can't with this man. I can't. Taisha touches on her emotional goodbye with Blake, which I had questions about. And she says that the reason why she was overcome by so much emotion is because she knew she was letting go of a genuine and like, like a, just good guy. I really did have feelings for you. I just didn't know if we could get there at the end. He asks her if, um, if they had more time, would they have forged the connection that he would have liked? And she ultimately says she doesn't think it was a time issue even. Like, his heart, just like Riley, just like um, that other guy, what's his name? The guy who, like, self self-eliminated um they were just hung up on the process the first time around with claire and now to have to rewire your brain to forge a connection with somebody else it's hard it's hard and in her mind she's like i already like almost canceled you out like she tried she genuinely tried but when you know your heart's with somebody else how much are you really willing to sacrifice in order to be with that person knowing that like they've already kind of ruled you out is that making sense i hope it is but i totally get her under her um her explanation hopefully blake is seen again i've been saying blake a lot because i really need blake to uh <laughs> be the next bachelor okay that's the season i would watch riley actually breaks down as he recounts uh, his goodbye with Tasha, It's okay. It's okay. He ended up saying that when he got home, he realized that he had fallen harder than he had processed at the time. He talks about how he was basically paralyzed <laughs> with heart. I don't mean to laugh. No, let me take that back. He was basically paralyzed with heartbreak. Still don't see it. Ah, 
still don't see it. I don't know. Like, was stuff in production missing? Or I don't, I don't know. I just don't feel like his connection really was like that strong. Not the way that she feels for Zach. Not the way that she feels for uh, Ivan. Not the way that she feels for the the guy with the muscles. Like I, I don't feel like those connections compare. To be honest, so it's interesting to hear him like really explain that he was far more into the process than we saw. However, I don't know if production did you a disservice or something. I don't know, but I, it just wasn't there for me. So due to the pandemic, the hometowns are actually filmed on the uh, resort itself. Everybody made like a makeshift situation of what their city is actually like. And they brought in the families and or friends um, to the resort itself. So everybody quarantined, you know, everybody's safe and all that jazz. I do have a question though. Was it like burning hot? They, why was everybody sweating everybody was sweating and i know it was not the nerves like people were legit like just i don't know whatever we're moving on let's go to the first date so brendan was the first date of the week and his pre-family date was a carnival setting with his niece it was really cute you know adorable they're like making it competitive and all that stuff um the niece seems to really like tasia but honestly what kid doesn't like an adult who you know gives them stuff makes things fun like yeah but the family who they actually go and meet is brendan's older brother and his sister-in-law brendan talks to his brother about his concerns about remarrying and the fact that he doesn't want to have to do it a second time you know this is extremely important to me i don't want to do this a second time yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and and yeah. it fail a second yeah. time yeah. you can definitely sense the reservation even last week when he was talking about how like he might have cold feet i don't even think it has to do with his connection with tasia it's just the fact that he's been down this road before and so has she and a lot of divorcees don't want to have to go through that process again especially when they're so young it's like dang like can't i find somebody to like grow with and like make a long-term you know relationship with so i definitely understand his reservations it seems though that after talking with his brother he has eased up about them and he's been able to really process the feelings that he has and he's coming around i can see that he's definitely more willing to give himself fully to the process you know what i mean like he he's less thinking of like the negatives and and just thinking okay so much good can come out of this though that i need to give myself a proper chance at the end of the date he doesn't actually say whether or not he's falling for her i feel like he is but you know you never really know however their bond is evidently stronger godspeed to this too i feel it in my heart um, is it the strongest? Mm, I don't know, but it's pretty strong. The second date of the week is with Zach, and their pre-family date is a day in the life of a New Yorker. Taxi! <laughs> we got a taxi here. It was so cute. They went and got bagels, went and got pizza, you know, did all the New York stuff. I mean, one thing you would not do in New York, though, is jump to a public fountain because New York is dirty, y'all. No offense to any New Yorkers, but New York is dirty. Anyways, the family, um, the family was his parents and his brother, and they seem to be skeptical, but also like I understand their concerns because not only has Zach been married before, he's been through a dark, um, a dark season of life within his marriage. So I understand the protectiveness that his family has over him. I could really see myself marrying him at the end of this, to be honest. Yeah. You didn't answer the question. I'm not that comfortable doing what we're doing here, but I do feel comfortable with you. Don't oh, take, that's good. Don't take that the wrong way. No, I don't, I don't. Uh, uh, they seem to be keen on Tasia as a person. However, with this accelerated process and the fact that he's not the only contender for Tasia's, you know, heart, I, I would be weary too. I'd be weary too. Like, I know my son, I know what he's been through, and I never want him to go through this again, especially when he's finally availed himself to be loved and to, and to love somebody else just for that to be taken away oh you guys <laughs> oh 
I feel for him. I feel for him. Um, they've already confessed to each other that they are falling for each other, so there's no surprise there. We'll see how this goes. I hope for Zach's sake he's not shattered by this if this doesn't work out in his favor because he's finally admitted to himself that he wants those things that he used to say he didn't, like the marriage, the kids, the building a happy life and all that. Like He's put in so much work to get here even with his checkered past i hope that this experience doesn't um taint that picture for him the third date of the week is ivan and tasia and honestly guys are they not a full-blown couple please please he hit the nail on the head with today's date they already look like a legit couple. I don't know if it's because like they both have like similar mixes in them or what it like. They, it, it just looks cohesive to me. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but the two of them, they just look like they work. And on top of that, his family is so sweet. His parents are so eloquent on what they're trying to say. It's It's not just like... I'm protective of my son. It's like, like they're, what's the, what's, how do I even explain? Like, now I'm sure I'm in it for the long run. That would be something I would encourage you to, to look at and have that kind of a conviction. They're so open of the fact that like, they're protective of their son, but they're also protective of Tasia and they want them to be a success story. And they didn't um, berate her. They didn't, like, give her an interrogation. Like, it was just sharing of stories, articulating what the process is like as a, as a family for them. And, like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm explaining myself right. All I'm saying is this situation really works for me. Near the end of the date, his brother, y'all, I couldn't keep it eating. I'm here getting all doughy-eyed, sappy, sappy, and emotional. Like, uh, his brother coming in was, like, the one thing that he really, really wanted. You know, he says, like, his brother is, is his biggest influence. So I loved that he was able to come through. It's so interesting how they contrast each other. They are total opposites, like, complete opposites. But you can sense the love and, I mean... The brother approves, the parents approve. I mean, Tasha, girl, this is your family, okay? Don't sleep. This is, these are your people. The last date of the week is Ben's date, and basically it's a makeshift tour of um, Venice Beach, and they were roller skating throughout the whole thing. Ben's family um, was his sister and his really, really close friend. Those are the two people who came to give him advice. And honestly, it's, it's good that they came because Ben was unable to unpack whether or not he was in love with um, Tasia. And we see this time and time again with Ben, like he finds it hard to express certain things. And I mean, He's been through a lot. I totally understand. He seems to have a lot of trauma that he hasn't fully um, delved into. So to have his sister there to be like, okay, what is it that we're feeling? To have his friend there help him dismantle some of the things that are holding him back from fully, you know, engulfing himself into the process. He comes to the realization that he actually is in love with Taisha. I'm in love with her. That's, I know. I, I sat down. I was just like, you love her. Like, what are you talking about? Now, as we know, the, the book stops here. However, um, I'm glad that he was able to have this epiphany, though, because... If you go through a process like this, one that you're probably very skeptical of, it's a reality TV show, it's an accelerated process, and you actually find love out of it, I hope that it doesn't taint you. I hope that it shows you that love is possible for you and that you're able to have these feelings for people in such a in such a fast pace and to have it be so genuine and so overwhelming in in the way that he was feeling it in this moment i don't want him to clam up i i don't want that at all i feel like it might come maybe however i really 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 hope that this has just opened himself up to other possibilities with different women 
So unfortunately, like I hinted before, Ben is the one who was let go. Although he had the revelation of being in love with Tasia, he was actually unable to tell her. In true Ben fashion, I just blew it. I'm in love with her and I should have told her. I think that was the last thing that Tasia was really looking for. Like, he, just that one push of like, yes, I love you. Not even I'm falling for you, like, I love you. Because you can sense he's he's carrying a lot and he doesn't want to release and just be in it. You know what I mean? So, unfortunately, his lack of expression sent him home. And she's actually bummed at this goodbye. Like, I'm heartbroken, but I'm, I'll be all right. The fact that he couldn't give me like one ounce of emotion was extremely disappointing. Personally, I understand it. I understand it. I, like, you're almost numb at this point. You find yourself at a crossroads of like, wow, I'm so in love with this person, but I don't know how to say it. And then you get sent home. It's like, dang, is it because I didn't say it? Or is it because she didn't love me? Like, you're thinking of so much that you end up just going numb and thinking of nothing. And unfortunately, his goodbye <laughs> it really showed that that he was just like it was just too much that you'd rather just block it all off and and give an empty kind of response so i just i hope i hope i hope i hope i hope, I hope he recovers from this i don't want him to be the next bachelor i don't please please no but bachelor in paradise that could be great for you you know like leave the bachelor for blake please and thank you goodbye so next week is the fantasy suites um my predictions honestly is that brendan is gonna go i don't see his connection as strong as ivan and zach's um but didn't i make the prediction that it would be them in the end i'm pretty sure i did i'm gonna find the clip and put it in because i'm pretty sure that i said that anyway i i think brendan's time is up but we're gonna see that's gonna be next week there's gonna be two episodes again i might just do one big video that time as well because y'all i i'm tired okay i'm ready for the season to be over <laughs> i'm so ready anyways i'll catch you guys next week for another review goodbye